Waverley Antique Bazaar, one of our places that we go to quite often. So it's a pretty massive place, there's like about six aisles and it goes all the way down and it's full of individual stalls of different sellers so there's always something new going on. So we usually come here every few months because you usually find different things. Fountain oh, That's it. Let's see if we can see Schaefer. It says Schaefer USA on it. And it's got an inky cartridge. I might walk around with that. Vintage leather pouch. There we go. Mm. I could buff that up, that would look really nice though. It's probably a bit expensive, but I'm curious about that. I might walk around with that for a while and see if I take it home. I quite like that. Alright. 32 bucks eek. Ew, that's so manky. <laughs> That is a Windsor and Newton. So we can get it up there. Yeah, I think I might leave this one. I already have a box that I got for less. But we'll see. I might leave that one here for now. That's pretty cool. There's a price on it. There's some pretty awesome ink bottles there, but <laughs> exceptional oak desk set early 20th century, also an exceptional price at $195, so I think we'll be giving that one a skip. But that one's pretty cool, I like that. I just saw this in the cabinet. Black Forest Bear Inkwell. 19th century, $425, and <laughs> that would look awesome on my desk, but yeah, that's well out of my price range. But that is really cool. I like that too. And what else have they got? Oh, they got this as well, Statler Mars Precision Instrument Set, but I kind of really don't need that at the moment. They got some really awesome things in this cabinet. Far out of my price range. Never mind. Okay, what have we got? Inkwell 50s slash 60s, 24 bucks. Cents. Kind of more in the price range. It's missing a bottle, but oh look, this bottle here is a Schaefer's, I think, script ink. And I actually have a script ink bottle as well, which is just one I got a while ago, so maybe I could put the other one in there. Ooh, I might consider that. I have a set just like this but my one has all of the lids so even the little one in the middle I'll show you that when I get to my actual filming of the pieces that I do have. That's 15 bucks it's not bad but I think I paid 18 for the one with the lids so why would I get another one? Yeah, that one's a bit expensive too, that's 165 but it's pretty cool, I like it. And this is our other one, which is local and is the sister to the Waverley Antique Market. This one was built afterwards and I think it was built because the first one was so successful so they found another site and built this too. So let's go and see what goodies we can find 
in here today. So this is the entrance. I'll just go inside a little bit and you can see that it's like the other one. It's massive. So let's go through and see what we can find. I've seen two things in here. One's that cochineal bottle and the other is the little rubber stamp ink and that looks like it's four bucks and I think the cochineal is only about three so guess who's going to be picking those up? Just waiting for someone to open the cabinet. Yay! So we got the cochineal and that's three dollars and Joplin's black rubber stamp ink and that's got four bucks. Yeah, got to get those, definitely. Spotted something else. $25 it says, a hundred years old. Hmm. It's always hard to know exactly. A sterling 925 inkwell with fiddleback timber base. It's not bad for 25 bucks. It's huge. I don't know where I put it. Alright. That says 1930s Mulga inkwell, 1912. Oh, wow, that's just made out of a piece of wood. And it's definitely Australian made. But that's kind of cool. I think I'd rather get this over that other really massive one. So I think I might pick this one up instead. It's so cute. I kind of like it. It's so interesting. I think I'll have to pick that one up. Now one's coming home and I think I might put the other one back. Alright. cover is broken a bit. That's cute though. Super cute. But it's got this on the bottom. It's like plaster or something. That's really weird. Mm. I think about that one for a while. Might get it up but I'll look around and have a think about that. It's not too bad for five bucks. Ooh, what's this? Oh, that's adorable. Oh, I like that. That's so pretty. What's that one? Upside down. Let me just turn it around. Made in Japan. <laughs> okay. Now, retro telephone. This is what I'd spotted here. Now, that is pretty awesome. But it is also 200 bucks, so that's going to be staying in the cabinet, unfortunately, because Really, that's a bit out of my budget right now. But you never know, one day I might come back with lots of money and be able to afford such a thing. But for now, we'll leave the finely decorated gilt brass inkwell with the original glass inserts right where they are. Well, I've spotted another one. Hang on, let me not let my bags swish everywhere. That's a pretty awesome one. That's lovely, but let's see, and that's, that is a really nice condition one, but that is $55, I don't think I'll put that, yeah, see it's a bit pricey too, maybe I will just get that $5 one for now, even if it's broken it's not too bad, alright, I think that's me done. Alright, so the first thing that I am going to do is show you the things I got from the Waverley Antique Market. And first up we have this red case, which is just a rounded one. This is actually, would have had, it says Coronate Cultured Pearls, so this is just a necklace or bracelet case for pearls. Um, ow, I just squished my finger. Ow, that hurt. Me. Okay, so that just came with it. I will put that over to one side. And what I was really getting was this pen. This is a fountain pen. It's a Schaefer. And it looks in pretty good condition, which is why I got it. It's, I don't know if we can see what's on there. Let me just put my hand there so it might focus. That noise you were hearing in the background is my cat walking over things where she shouldn't be. So it says Schaefer Italic B made in USA. We are looking at a Schaefer pen that was made in America 
in the USA. I think that might be where the company actually originated. And it's all plastic. It's very light. It's not exactly a super heavy, expensive pen. It was probably very much an everyday pen. Does this come off? Ew. Slowly pull it off. Gently, gently, gently. Okay, I need to give this a really good soaking in water. But otherwise, it does still look pretty clean. The nib doesn't look clogged or anything. It just looks like it could do with a bit of a soaking. And I will probably keep this cartridge. And I've got a syringe which I can probably squeeze into this little hole and squeeze ink into. So I'll keep that because I don't have a converter to go with this pen at the moment. So that's some pretty good neck. It was 10 bucks. I don't know how old it is. I'd say looking at it, it's probably 80s at the very, very earliest, maybe 90s or even like 2000. So it's not super vintage or anything like that, but I'm always on the lookout for decently priced fountain pens because sometimes, I mean, they if you collect fountain pens or know anything about fountain pens, you'll know just how expensive they can get into the thousands. But that's actually a nice pen. It would be something that I'd use for every day, so I thought I'd pick that one up. Okay, next object that I bought. We'll just put that over on the side here. Okay, this isn't really an art supply as such, but it just called to me. And it was a little bit more pricey than I would have liked, but it's just a... A really old leather case and there's just something about leather cases that I just cannot resist don't know what it is just it's really nice actually it's it's in decent condition it's I mean it looks a bit battered around here but I was thinking I've got some leather conditioning cream which I was going to put on it and I'm really hoping I can restore it back into something that's actually half decent and I'm wondering look Ah, uh, not quite. How annoying is that? Well, I might find something to pop in there. I don't know, it just sounds a bit silly, but sometimes I feel a bit sorry for items and I just want to take them home and clean them up and give them a new lease on life. And this was one of those objects. Sentimental? Yes, definitely. Now, I also got this silver box. I don't know, I think it's, I would say, just silver plated. But, I don't know, I just something, again, it called to me, made in Japan, so that's not too bad. I wouldn't know when this thing was made, probably, I don't know, 80s, maybe? It's a bit scuffed inside. But the reason I got it is because it's got a lovely, perfect, sort of square, rectangular shape. And I thought that it would make a really cool box to put half pans in. And make it into like a little watercolour box. How fun would that be? So let's just pop some of these in. So it takes, what, five across? And assuming we do it in this way. I wonder if you can squeeze it around. I've got differently awkwardly shaped half pans here. Oh, okay. Well, I'm guessing you could probably squeeze in between 15 and 20 half pans into there. Okay, it's not an art supply technically, but I make it into an art supply. So let's move that one out of the way. And the last thing I got, because I didn't actually buy that much there, was this inkwell. This was the one I think it said it was uh, dated around the 50s to 60s. That's not necessarily the case if the person who's selling it doesn't know either. But it's just a basic wooden inkwell. It's nothing very exciting, but... The main reason I got it was for the bottle, which is this guy here, and oh no, oh god, I ripped off, that's annoying. Okay, I did not notice that because they taped the bottle down, and I don't like to pull the tape off, but I suppose I can put it together. Okay, now this is interesting, though, so, alright, so that will go back together, I'll probably stick that down. Alright, this one says it was made in Iowa, USA. And I have another ink bottle, which I'm going to bring over now. And technically I did not get this today, but it's the reason I've got this container because I also, and I'm just reaching for it, I also have this ink bottle, which is a Schaefer script. See, script, not with the T on the end. 
So it's got the same cap, but on here, and this is actually a really good quality one, and let's just put them together. It's, how annoying is that? I'm spewing. Okay, so this one says Schaefer's Script Writing Fluid, permanent number 22 blue bat, black, and it's the WA Schaefer Pen Company, Fort Madison, Iowa, USA. So made in the USA. Okay, so that's the one that came with the box. Gentle, gentle. I might put that in the bottom, how they had it. At least they kept it in there. Some people might have thrown that away and then you'd only have half a label and that would be super annoying. Now, the other bottle that I got ages ago is also a Schaefer's Script Writing Fluids, washable blue number 42. But you could see that this one was made in Australia, in Melbourne. <laughs> so I did some reading on this and the company, which I think went international, oh goodness, it's a long, it's been around for a very long time. They came to Melbourne in 1951, they opened up shop. So I thought that was really fascinating. I've actually found a little newspaper article about that. But look at that. Oh, they fit together. That's very pleasing. But I don't really buy my things for the purposes of reselling. I want them for myself. And I like to reuse items. I think it's really fun to find something that's been unloved for so many years and give it a new lease on life. So that's more my idea of a good time rather than just keeping things in their, you know, patinaed condition where no one's ever going to use it. And it's, yeah, it's a bit sad. Okay, I will move on to the bits and pieces that I got from Hunted. Okay, so the items I got from Hunted. The first two is the cochineal bottle and the Joplin's Black Rubber Stamp Ink. Now these were in that one glass container and they were quite cheap. Now cochineal's, this is actually, I would say, a food colouring. I mean, it says extract, so I imagine it this is more of a food colouring, but the pigment cochineal has been used since around the 15th century, so this is really, really old pigments, like from things that they used from centuries ago, and it's, I'm going to go more into cochineal in a later video because I find it really fascinating, but I got it because the bottle's cute, it was, what, three bucks? <laughs> so why not? And this one, Joplin's black that's what that says rubber stamp ink and this it's got a melbourne tag on it but i think that's actually different so i think they just put that on to sell it and i am not sure when this would have been around so if i manage to find any information on this i'll pop it up on the screen somewhere here <laughs> otherwise we will just have to live in mystery as to when Joplin's ink would have been made. Okay, those two over there. I love little bottles, I can't resist them. All right, so I got this guy and he is pretty gormless, but I got it because it is just so unusual. I've never seen anything like this before. It's made from like a solid piece of wood and it's still got the bark on it. It's been covered in resin or varnish. But I just, think it's kind of interesting and that's the so it's a little inkwell that is embedded in there did we say whether it was 1930s 40s or 50s so I'll pop that up there because I'll have to go back to my other footage to see as I said in the shop it is very very hard to know exactly when something was made sometimes but I just thought that was kind of cool it's kind of hideous but I like it anyway <laughs> so I'm just going to put that over to one side and I got I did end up getting this little one it was five bucks I couldn't resist it it was on this whole shelf of brass items and it was just this one little inkwell some of the other brass items as you saw were horrendously expensive and I kind of wanted to come home with something so I got this little bloke He's a bit broken, the lid's okay, but it is broken at the um, join here at the hinge, and you can see where it goes, but I don't know that that is going to really go back together very well, because 
this piece here does not move so you can't put it on there and then have it hinge so I'll just have to leave it I think <clears throat> it's a little bit chipped around the edges here too but it would still hold ink I uh, just the base of it I don't know what this is and it looks like it's been burnt a bit here but I wouldn't mind trying to chisel that out we'll see, so we'll see. I could well uh, totally destroy this thing <laughs> before I even get to use it but it's adorable it really is it's in one of those sort of yeah it's hideous brass but I don't know just something about it just took my fancy and I couldn't leave it there I did walk around the entire stall before I decided but on the way out I just picked him up and he came home <laughs> and the last thing I got which was pure impulse and not art related at all was this gorgeous little plate it's so cute I just really love the fruit design it's so pretty and it's very very well made there's no flaws on it that's just a bit of schmutz there it's a tiny little flaw there but it's adorable and it's made in Japan not made in Taiwan or made in China which just about everything seems to be these days and I really like it I just thought I'll probably use it I don't know could put pens on it <laughs> but then you hide the design so I don't know this will stay in my office because I think it's really cute and who will know what I use it for I just like to collect things that are cute and pretty and it took my fancy so these are the random items that I got in this last couple of trips to Hunted and the Waverley Antique Market. Some people would say they're total junk, but I just have been collecting these sorts of things for a number of years now. I nearly forgot when I forgot my silver box. There we go. And that too. <laughs> my silver watercolour paint box, which is what I'm going to make that into. So look, if you don't have a passion for collecting things, you'd see this and just go, oh, what a load of junk, why would you spend your money on it? But it's like any kind of collecting, it's fun, it just brings me some pleasure to see all of the random objects, and I just love wandering around antique markets and seeing all of the fascinating things that people had in their lives. Some things from the 50s, some things from... 100 years ago but that's it for today I'm going to show in a future video my whole collection and I'll just quickly show you some of these things as well but I do have quite a lot of other bits and pieces that I've bought over the years and you might be interested in seeing what I've got some of them are some really cool art supplies that are really really hard to get and I was very excited to find them and I'm also going to do a little video hopefully <clears throat> on restoring this as well so look out for those if you've enjoyed my videos please like and subscribe and comment if you want and I really appreciate all of your feedback if you've got some knowledge on any items here please let me know because I'm always interested to learn more about an item so that's it for today I hope you have a great day and I will swatch you all later bye